Welcome everyone. This is a simple little video where you can watch a golf swing. It looks like a good golf swing, but compared to a really good player, this would be the difference between a 7-iron going 105 yards and a 7-iron going 150 yards. I want to show you the difference between uh, what I'll call a little bit of stretch or a little bit of stress. And there was a, a video I did uh, that is out about tension in a golf swing. And tension can be a good thing if it's used properly. Think in terms of me taking a spring and torquing it. Well, there's going to be more energy inside of that. So at waist high, we just see a little more structure here in the arms. Arms are just pushing down a little bit, stretching out a little more. As the turn gets a little bit bigger, I don't mind seeing a little lifting. Clearly a 90 degree shoulder turn. And I'll take, oop, sorry about that. Video went a little fast. Just a little more stretch to the top. And we're going to start seeing some real key differences as I start this down. So two important things. And I'll stop the video on the downswing when the left arm is about parallel to the ground. Okay. Two big concepts that if people understood a couple basic concepts, uh, you'd really add some stretch into your golf swing. So here... The left hand's about as high as the, sh as the shoulder. We can see that the shaft and the angle of the left arm are creating a pretty nice angle, an acute angle. Here we've got an obtuse angle, so we're already seeing uh, some throw or casting a little early. I'm going to do away with those lines. I'm going to show you this is an important line. You can actually see how the knees here on the right are pinched in. Well, that's putting the pelvis in a place that it can't really do much from there. Player on the left, the femur is already externally rotated. You can see a lot more space between the legs. And then as I bring that a hair closer down, here we go, there goes all the cast. And again, if, if the pelvis can't turn, then I've got two options. I've, I'm going to basically either sway and cast or I'm going to start lifting and casting. So as I lower this down, we'll see still some maintenance of the angle between the lead arm and the shaft. And then kind of the moment of truth impact, we will see a marked difference. And if I draw off a line down the forearm of any player, if the club is already past it, when it is near the ball, hitting the ball, then the club has lost a lot of its energy. Here, you can clearly see, I'm just drawing a line, shoulder joint through the wrist joint, and the club is still behind the ball. That allows the club to stress a little bit, and it's, it's going to actually have a little more energy when it strikes the ball. So that simple concept we've talked about in a lot of other videos, but if I go a little bit further and zoom in just a little bit on what the right wrist and golf club look like. Oops, hit the wrong button by accident. I'm going to zoom in a little bit. I'm going to zoom this one in. And you'll see how the trail wrist is actually flat here, which there's really not a lot of stress in that club uh, this bend point in the in the trail wrist boy that has been kind of a fundamental for the last uh, well as long as people have been playing golf which is about 500 years so if our basic geometry we said is always a lowercase letter y with the lead lever staying out ahead of the golf club so once the club passes the lead arm we've really lost uh, a lot of leverage over the ball so it makes makes it harder again right here you're seeing the difference between a seven iron that goes 105 versus a seven iron that goes 145 to 150 so 
when we look at that from other viewpoints, I'm going to just show you a couple, couple players that uh, from different angles, just so you can get an idea of, of how much uh, uh, how much you could exaggerate it. Which you know, good players they uh, they when we ask students to over exaggerate it, this is what we ask students to do. Uh, so you can actually see a big bend in Dustin Johnson's right wrist, big bowing right there. And magically, he'll have the bend in his right wrist all the way to impact. So the ball is launched. He still has the bend point in the right wrist. That stabilizes the golf club. On the right, we have Cameron Champ. So I've picked two of the longer hitters. And what's interesting to me is the people that do this the most all seem to hit it the farthest. And when you start to hit it far, it makes the game a lot more enjoyable and a lot easier. So here again is the bend point in the right wrist. Uh, watch our other videos because I talk about this lowercase letter Y uh, in a lot of them. And it's just so important that even after impact, if I just draw a line down the lead arm, you can see how the club is still behind the, the plane of the lead arm. All right. Uh, super, super important concept. And that would go right into a lot of our other videos where we said, okay, when the club is about waist high, we should see two very straight arms, whether they're rotated or not at that point really doesn't matter because the ball has already been launched. So pay attention to those little details and you'd be shocked when you get a couple angles uh, better, more correct, the ball will start to launch completely different. I'm Marty Nowicki, Impact Snap, Turning Stone Resort in upstate New York. Uh, please hit the subscribe button uh, on this page, and uh, we're going to be putting out a lot more videos, and I thank you for watching.